Okay, so this is part two of my series on using VSL samples and sequencing in you know, logic, just using VSL samples. So I wrote the piece and I'm about ready to sequence it into logic. But before I do, I wanted to just mention a couple, a few changes that I made. Let me do this. So this is like. Let me just show you those. Before anything else, let's talk about the click because, excuse me, in logic, the click is always quarter note. It can't do a dotted quarter note click, and the piece I wrote was in 6 8. So to do a dotted quarter note click, I had to use this uh, drum set. And I used like a clicking tone for the dotted quarters. And I set the metronome to 140 which would be about 94 or so dotted, you know, dotted quarter equals 94 would be 140 at quarter note. So, so I had to do some calculations there. So the reason why I did this was because I didn't want, you know, the normal, all the eighth notes, the machine gun effect kind of thing. So that's why I made my own click here. So I just wanted to show you that. Just move this up. So that's that. And also, with the let's talk about. The, so let's go through the instruments, and then after that, we'll talk about the reverb chain in a little more detail than last time, and how I bust things, how I uh, subgroup things. So, but let's go through first the instrument changes here. So for the woodwinds, everything's pretty much the same, except. I did so added some trills here in the piccolo and then in the uh, flute. So we have the piccolo trill, that kind of thing. And then also the flute trill, <clears throat> which I needed in certain spots here. All right, so it's just half step trilling. Um, in the Vienna instrument, it has half step or whole step trilling, so we're just doing the half step there for what I needed it for. Okay, so that's that's it for the woodwinds changes. So for the brass, a couple new things I did was on the epic horns. I did when you hit it, uh, use a higher velocity, you're going to get the blare sample. So here's the normal legato, and then hit it harder get that blare effect. So I did that for the epic horns. Did I do it for the... I didn't do it for this one. Just for the epic horn. For that one too. So I think this is the same. We had, I had some four horn instances that I used. Especially when you do chords and things. You don't want too many horns. You know, because it'd be epic horns. Uh, or eight, I believe. So I added the trumpet, solo trumpet. So some some more trumpet tracks were added. Another legato track because I had some. I like to use the legatos when I do the the two trumpet tracks. Trombones, bass trombone. So all this is pretty much. We had the harp, which I think I had for the last one. Last video. Melodic percussion added a xylophone, I think. Glock, Celeste, Chimes. So that's that. Um, so the xylophone. And then for percussion, what I ended up settling on was timp the timpani hits, timpani rolls. I separated the two. Um, Right. Snare, snare rolls, bass drum, bass drum rolls, cymbal and gong hits, gong hit. This is mostly the cymbal hit. You know, all the the cymbals are together in the VSL, a special edition, which is what I use. So, kind of put those together. But I was using this mostly for cymbal swelling. I mean, you know, the uh, suspended cymbal swells. Gong hit. Okay, various percussion. 
think for that we use some triangle and things like that. Okay, so that's percussion. Strings. All right, so this may be different. For the violin ones, I use the orchestral plus the chamber, right? And then for violin two is just the orchestral. And I also have a chamber one for the staccato and the pizzicato. Just because I wanted the sections to be a little different sounding. You know, the orchestral plus the chamber would be a bigger section. So I just did that to... Uh, then we have uh, some viola ponticello that I used. So that's this. The shorts, right? All right, then the rest is pretty much, we have some pizzicatos in here. So that's it for that. So everything is, everything else is the same. So that's the setup for that. Now let's talk about the mixer here. <coughs> Go into the reverb first. So the thing I like about Logic X is that you can have track folders, which which is similar to uh, in Cubase. So it looks better here. So it's a lot cleaner here when you look at it. So if we open up the mix, let's uh, let's open up all these, and then we're going to go through on the mixer here with panning and things like that. because we didn't talk about panning at all in the last one. Okay, so you notice I try, you know, I'm not using the, I'm using, we talked about this before, but I'm using the the VSL, the, the instrument, and not the ensemble. So I'm doing separate instances of all the instruments here, and it's just a better way for me to work. So I'm not using the power panning or anything in the ensemble, I'm just doing panning all in Logic. So you notice here the levels are pretty low. I like to give myself a lot of headroom. That's a, a common mistake that a lot of composers make is when they're starting out with this is, you know, get really, really high with the levels. All right, especially woodwinds. They should be pretty low in the mix if you think about an orchestra. I mean, that's your, I would say one of your, probably your quietest section. So you have to sort of think about that. Think about the brass being the loudest section the strings being a little, you know, a little maybe a little less than brass. So you have to take into account that percussion can be pretty loud at times, or it should have a pretty big dynamic range. So you'll notice the woodwinds here are pretty low. So I tried to balance that as best I could. For panning, I had the your typical orchestral setup. So, f you know, flutes on the left, panned a little to the left, um, right? try to give everything its own space. Oboes and clarinets, you know, oboes to the right, clarinets to the left, uh, bassoons to the right, right, and contrabassoon as well. Put the contrabassoon a little closer to the middle here. So that's the panning of that. Then the horns, I have the, the, the horns to the right a little bit, and then trumpets to the left, trombones a little to the right, bass trombones as well. Tuba more towards the center. Okay, so that's that. For the melodic percussion, the celeste is pretty far to the left here. Glock a little closer to the center. Xylophone more towards, even more towards the center. And then chimes I put on the right. Now you can do, any, you know, you can change this up, but that's the common sort of setup for that. But, you know, it varies from orchestra to orchestra, so use your own judgment with that. I wanted to get the chimes a little to the right here. And then the regular percussion. Timpani a little, a little to the left but, but kind of centered. Same with the snare drum. Bass drum even more towards the center. I like to keep my low frequencies sort of centered with the exception of uh, basses, the string basses. Cymbals a little more to the left. Um, so yeah, the various stuff, a little to the left. And let's see. Okay, so let's get to the strings here. Now we have the strings. Violin 1, <coughs> and uh, minus 25 to the left. 
Now in logic, if you go all the way, it's like minus 64. So minus 25 is like halfway to that. Halfway to hard panned left. Okay. So violin two to the left, but not as much. Negative 15 here. Violas, right, plus 10. Okay, so more to the center. Cellos, plus 20 to the right. Celli, I should say. Now bases, to the right a little bit, but not too much. Like I said, I like to keep things sort of centered, so plus 10 here for the bases. And that's it. Now I have the subgroups here. So I've grouped all these, subgrouped all the orchestral sections and I've divided it this way. Winds are in uh, one on one fader here. The strings, brass, melodic percussion, and the percussion. So now the way I treated these with the reverbs. Now I didn't, a lot of people, you know, do different reverbs for different sections and all that. But you know, I pretty much, I'm using two reverbs. I'm using one for the room like a smaller room sound. I'm using the QL spaces and I'll show you that. Let's open that up. Okay, so dry signals all the way down because we're because we're bussing to it. I use the Acme storage, 0.8 second. Pre-delay set to 10. All right, so a very short pre-delay. Uh, the wet signal is on negative 13 here. So that gives us sort of a, let me just show you with, we'll use a just for an example here, I'll show you with um, pizzicatos here. So let's go back to the mixer here. And I'll mute the hall. So here's just the quantum leap. So see, it gives you that kind of room sound, right? So very, it's sort of a tight room, right? So now let me mute that, and we'll listen to the hall here. Check this out. So that's a longer, longer tail, right? So now how I have that set is the mix is all the way up. Pre-delay, 20 milliseconds, which I think is a good range, you know, it's a good sort of midway point. You could go all the way up to 50, but I like 20 there. And the decay is 1.5 seconds, right? And I didn't really mess with anything else, so I'm just using the concert hall for that. So now where it does change, so those are my two reverbs. Now if we look at the sends here, right? You can see, so for the so this top, the bus two is um, at the QL spaces. So that's your room is the top one. Then your hall is the bottom one. So for the room on the woodwinds, I have it at negative three, right? And then this at negative two, which is the hall. For the strings, negative four, because I figure they're a little closer to you, you know, in proximity. So I, a little less reverb there, negative four, and negative five, right? Which maybe I'll bring that up a little bit to four. So they're both at negative four there. So the brat and the brass, negative three for the room and negative two because it's a little further away. Percussion, which is even further, I went negative two and zero. So that's, that gives you the depth. So that's, that's where we that, where it comes in with the positioning of the, so how much reverb, because when you have more reverb, it gives you a sense of something is further away, right? And that's pretty much it. And I think, so I think now we're ready. Oh yeah, I did some couple, let's talk about some EQ things here. Oh yeah, and the harp. So the harp has its own thing here. So it's not bust anything. I mean, rather it's, you know, not subgrouped, obviously. 
So the harp, I have a negative 4 and negative 1. And that seemed to work for that. And it's pretty low in the mix here. And I have it to the right a little bit. All right, and some EQing happening on the snare because I wanted to get rid of certain frequencies. There was something around the 240 here that I didn't like, so I cut it down a little. Something around, you know, the, the low mids here in the snare. So I, I took that out a little bit. Same with this. This is just the roll, so same. Um, for the gong, right, for the tam-tam, I actually rolled off some low frequencies here because you had a lot of low frequency information that was clashing when I was uh, going through this. All right, so that's it. So I think the next part, we're going to look at the actual playing in of all the parts. So that should be fun. Still sort of tweaking the score. So I'm going to have a PDF of the score available, and we're going to look at it in the video as we go along. We're probably going to add one section at a time, one uh, orchestral section. Okay, thanks a lot. See you soon for part three. Okay, bye.